Hello, KCIW listeners, and welcome to Curry Cafe, where we put together a panel of volunteers and guests who discuss various topics from whimsical and fun to more serious subjects. Well, hello again. My name is Ray Gary, and welcome to another episode of the Curry Cafe. As Rick just told you, we talk about uh, serious and whimsical and all kinds of subjects, and I'm not sure exactly where this one falls, but we'll probably decide before we get very far into it. So we will start out today with going around the table, have everybody introduce themselves, and if they care to, they could tell you a little bit about themselves. If they choose not to, they can just give you their name and sit quietly. Well, that ladies go first. Okay. Oh, Robin oh. Renee, and um, I'm relatively new to Brookings, been here about three years, and I love it. Okay, and I'm Rick McNamer, volunteer here at KCIW, and uh, while y'all are listening today, you can text in questions, comments at 541-661-4098. And I am Troy Leah, the infamous from Crescent City, and I'll be hopefully starting my a show on this network, our station. Bring the uh, share the joy with Troy. So look out for that one. Yeah, look out for anything Troy that. does. I would say you <laughs> know it. <laughs> the, the voice of the LGBTQ community. All right. Yeah. So, um, as I said, I don't know if this is a whimsical subject or an important when? one or, or what exactly it is. But people ask me all through the week, you know, so well, what are you going to be talking about this Sunday? When are we going to talk about this Sunday? And I said, oh, it's going to be a great show. We're going to talk about World Heritage Sites. And they changed the subject right away as a general rule because it seemed like not very many people knew what World Heritage Sites are. Should you be one of those folks, you will find out today probably find more than you've <laughs> ever wanted to know about World Heritage Sites. So, who would um, who would like a volunteer explaining exactly what a World Heritage Site is? As we all point Robin. our eyes towards Robin. <laughs> You're all so, yeah, Robin, at me. Robin, Robin wanted this one. <laughs> well, I think it's a fascinating subject. There's it is. There's over 1,200, at last count, World Heritage Sites across the world. And they can be anywhere from man-made buildings. For example, the Opera House in Sydney is one. And... I'm not exactly sure the reason it is one, other than the fact that it took 20 years to build. And it's amazing. And it is kind of an interesting looking building. An interesting right? building. And Beautiful. it is definitely part of the landscape of the world. And then you can go to some of the heritage sites that have absolutely no knowledge of why they were built. For example, the my favorite happens to be the Cappadocia region in Turkey. That's along the Silk Road dating back to before the Byzantines, when the, all of the traders were on the Silk Road. In 1963, a farmer in Derenkuyu decided he wanted to enlarge his basement, and he put a hole in the wall. And he found, to his surprise, a cavern that went down 20 stories. He called the authorities. They found out that this city at one time housed over 20,000 people on 18 floors below ground. They had everything from churches to hospitals to battlegrounds. They had livestock. They grew things. This was all underground? Un all underground. So. Were, they, were they living there underground? Yes. And they have been continuously living there until 1920. And that's from about 3,500 years ago. They've been continuously living. So there. this guy that that made the hole in the wall, did he have possession of any? I was wondering if he could rent those rooms out. <laughs> you know, it, who knows? Maybe that's where B and Airbnb <laughs> came from. Yeah, that'll know. be the next heritage. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Wow. But they have found over 200 buried cities, and a lot of the cities were not as large as the 20,000. They were basically stopovers for the travelers that were along the Silk Road could go with their camels about 20 miles in one day. And every 20 miles, there's a buried city along this Silk Road. Wow. And they all have different names. Why were they buried cities? Because of the strife and the warfare. Oh, kind of like the Underground yeah. Railroad type the situation. Yeah. It was just a very tumultuous time. 
yeah. back then. Mm -hmm. And there was Still. strife and war and the people... Aggression, yeah. Yeah, they just decided to go underground. So, yeah. Well, when you're a heritage site, what, is, what does that mean? Is that, does that give you some kind of protection or... Um... Well, they had, they had large stone doors, round, that they would roll into place. And nobody could get through these doors. They could only be opened from the inside. These were fascinating cities. They were, they had all of their waste management was all in place. They had places for refrigerated food. They had areas of industry where they would make things. Um, they were full-fledged cities. Mm -hmm. And they were still going until the 1920s. Oh. So they lead you to believe. So they do. So they do. I was <laughs> never there. They're, they're I do still, not know. They're still active, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, like in, uh, like Ray says at the beginning, I was one of them. I kind of heard about them, you know, in the past few years, World Heritage Sites. and But I love researching, and that's one of the many reasons I love to work here at KCIW, finding out so many different things, things I never knew. But their general message, and now if I got this right, there, uh, after the United Nations was created in 1945, they were right behind. Yes. And part of the reason was to hopefully heal the world after two world wars. Right. All the atrocities, uh, unfortunately, a lot are still going on, but that was the general idea. And to get the world behind behind these sites, like you said, man-made, natural, uh, the Great Barrier Reef being one of them of the many thousands. Um, it just it was a good message, and uh, I'm certainly behind it, but uh, not the whole world is because there has been some destruction of some of these sites. There has been. Uh, and that's what we're trying to prevent. And, I, again, I think the overall message is just one of unity. Let's protect these uh, cultural, religious, if you will, a, a, any or man—I'm sorry, not oh, man-made, too, and natural sites. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I didn't check this morning, but uh, as— as of yesterday was the last time I checked. Uh, the KCIW studios are not on this list of heritage sites. No, why not? Soon, soon to be Is after that, I don't Troy. Yeah, oh. we have Troy now, and that may very well yeah. put us put us right in there. Well, we have twenty five of the heritage sites here in the United States, yes. just in the continental, and one right down the road. Oh, well, actually, yes, right here, the Redwood, uh, the Redwood Forest, North. Oh, yeah. Northern California, Southern Oregon, yeah. coast area is, is part of or one of them. It yeah. is, definitely. I mean, we have the Statue of Liberty, yeah, for example, which yeah. was the present from France in, yeah. for humanity and for peace. Right. And so for things like that. And I think that the heritage sites are always important to humanity. And again, Yes, I do too, especially now that I've it's reopened my brain a little bit to finding out exactly what. And before uh, we go any further, I never knew what UNESCO stands for. Now I do. And I'll just, ha I, I hope I have this right. United Nations Educational, Scientific, and Cultural Organizations. Yes. Which again, I think is okay. a wonderful, awesome. So you say you know it now. Can you do that without reading it? No. So you don't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Ray. Ray's really critiquing all of us today. <laughs> yeah, but there are. Uh, I'll, 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 I'll uh, somebody, that. somebody told me the show was too loose, and I need to spend a lot more time. Oh with, no, with, with the guests, making sure they're they're, just, good. they're doing it. Okay. okay. So right. actually, this week there was something in the news about one of our oldest UNESCO sites that popped up in the news with something brand new, and that is the headstone. On Stonehenge. Stonehenge. I read that. Thank you. I'm that, glad you brought that up. That I'm glad capstone is not from where they thought it was. It's from Scotland. They a far it distance. 400 and some miles. <laughs> really? That, that was yeah. bizarre. I did read that. Right. So there's things that are happening and things that we're discovering each day as time goes by. Mm -hmm. That's just amazing. Yeah. Well, UNESCO, uh, where I researched, uh, what, it was pronounced as the specialized agency f of the United Nations which their aim was basically to promote world peace, security through uh, international course, uh, co cooperation in education, arts, scientists, culture. Yeah, and it still exists to this day. It's non-governmental go and international, yeah, private sector. Mm -hmm. And just like all organizations like that, they've been 
very successful at achieving their goals. Well, they're trying. <laughs> you know, yeah. From what I've, I've researched in the past, like in the 70s, they would um, uh, move, well, especially after the war, they would move monuments to other locations, like you were just saying, to protect them from strife and other reasons, you know. Right, mm -hmm. that, I think war. that's one of their main things. You have to protect them against, yeah, war, natural disasters, disasters. whether it's a tidal wave or an earthquake. Right, or, uh, or a dam was being built and they, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going to be flooded out. Yeah. Or right. some kind Climate of change. tourists that want to go and knock over a rock like somebody yes. was filmed doing yeah. just yeah. a Boy month Scout. ago. Boy Scout. Why? Why? Yeah. You, you've got to wonder what... You know, you know, the Boy Scouts carefully screen their leaders. I, they go jump through all sorts of hoops and training and all that. But evidently they don't screen you to ensure that you're not going to knock over rocks in the national Well, world. the old right. adage, you can't legislate stupidity, is that yeah. part of it? I mean, <laughs> right. you know, it, it does sicken me to see people that do that. Um, did they ever catch him? That I don't know. Well, they, they oh, son, they I have. think they did, yes, and he was... Suspended for two weeks from the boys. No, I don't know what happened, but yeah, he was on video, so I think they did. Oh, okay. Catch him. Okay. You know, NASCAR was based in Paris, right? Yeah, I believe so. Their headquarters. Yeah. yeah. To this day. Mm hmm. Wow. I yeah. Speaking of the destroying things, I love old things, and I uh, as as is evident in my garage right now, <laughs> when I'm spending a fortune restoring a car that's not worth a tenth of what I'm paying for it, but just because I think it's a it's a piece of American history, but when I see these these ancient sites being destroyed by terrorists, and that just really makes me angry. Uh, yeah, it's, and that I did read about. Well, I remember this one. Um, ISIS was just tried to destroy one in Iraq that was uh, oh gosh, Hadra or Hadra, whatever it was. But yeah, uh, they did destroy a lot, though. They were successful. I, I, Oh, and oh, I guess maybe they were. Yeah, maybe they were. And how sad and you know how sad and sick is that? We just that's just totally antithetical to what uh, the heritage site. Yeah, they they didn't run that by their PR people before they started. Well, oh, well, do they have any? <laughs> Hello. Um, and I was a little surprised that we ourselves, the United States, oh, and Israel, stopped financing the UNESCO back in 2011 and i believe it was because the united or the unesco people wanted to include palestine palestinians right and uh, then uh, the trump administration withdrew completely in 2017 but we rejoined it in 2023 and then paid back wages or back dues, dues. if you will right to reinstate which i thought was a good thing because i yeah. yeah, we need uh, to be a part of it. Unfortunately, political and things do creep into this kind of stuff. But, well, yeah, I was uh, glad to see that we're, we're back online. When, when I lived in Alaska, which is just full is that of what cons happened? No. conspiracies, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, was, they, they were considering doing something in Alaska, making something a, a site, and the conspirators were up in arms wanting to know what we were doing, allowing the UN in our country and allowing uh, the UN to do. But they, they big fans of the UN. They, on, the, on the back of, uh, of a lot of road signs, there's a, there's a, a USP code thing, and that was supposedly so that when the UN troops come here, they can find their way around by reading those uh, things. Yeah. QR codes on the back of the signs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You make a conspiracy theory. Yeah, <laughs> they, if they are, if nothing else, they're original and creative in their ideas. I guess. <laughs> right. And and that is all they. <laughs> well, again, it's it's hard. Like I said, the general message is wonderful. I wish we still, and some of us do, still try to follow that uh, general what direction. Uh, because these sites, and again, how many, Robin? There's Orwell, over 1,200, 1200 at last, the last yeah. time I saw a number. Yeah, yeah. That we know of. Yeah. That we know of, yeah. I'm sure there's more. And still coming, or still more coming, probably. Cause it, I think as they find and discover things. Yeah. Or there's yeah. something they don't want us to know about. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's that as well. Yeah. Or, or, or know where they're at 
Yeah, in case, you know, for there for to protect them, right? In case there's like a nuclear attack or something that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, but they've done things, at least with some thought. For example, the seed bank in the Antarctic. I mean, that's there with millions of seeds, in oh, case yeah. something happens to the world. You know, I that's a UNESCO seeds. site. I didn't know they were did. doing that too. Yeah. That's. You know, so important. They, okay. they have to do that. So, you know, if something happens to the earth, we have to be able to regenerate. Definitely. You know, so they they are they're doing good things. Oh yeah. If we're not just oh, I think. you know not just for tourism and things like that, but right. they're they're trying to do things to Save preserve yeah. what we have in the in the world. Yeah, and again, they were part of that protection. Was well, I, I think we mentioned it is is climate change. Mm -hmm. You know, they are. That's a big issue. Well, yeah, and um, I just think that's a, a good thing that a lot of people are behind. That. Yeah, I don't know if Price we can save. find another forty five minutes to talk about the UNESCO sites in particular, unless you pick out certain ones, and then you wonder, well, well why? Why did they do? Why did man? So. So you say that I just happened to. <laughs> uh, I was looking at the Great Barrier Reef. Now mm -hmm. I think Ray, you've even scuba dived. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I've been there. Yeah. Well, reading about that, then I read something in a paper well, a couple of weeks ago, and I happened to get a hold of our good friend Bill Gorham before I came here because it was talking about the Great Barrier Reef because the world temp um, the world ocean temperatures have been the hottest in, I think, 400 years. Mm -hmm. And that right away clicked me. I said, what, were there people measuring the temp back then? Is that right? But anyway, Bill, I emailed him, he answered me. He said, well, you can take those temperatures by uh, analyzing coral sediments so that it's, it's true. But right. the article also said that because of the ocean temps, and we had one in Florida where they were like, what, the water was 100 degrees mm -hmm. last year or something. But anyway, it's there's a possibility a good possibility that the barrier reef could be gone within 20 30 years because of that if we don't somehow try to protect that and and bill gorham who's a marine biologist scientist he said yes that's very true in fact he was down when he emailed me back today he was down in costa rica and doing some diving and said he had noticed he'd been there before, and there was uh, a lot of destruction in those coral reefs too. Oh, the coral reefs are, are a mess. Well, well, I yeah. Several years ago, I was in in Key West, and we had friends from Arizona meet us there, and we were doing all the Key West things, and they wanted to go on a glass bottom boat, mm -hmm. and I tried to talk them out of it. I said, "No, this ain't the place to go on a glass bottom boat." But we went on it anyway, and you go out to where they, I don't remember if they anchored or maybe they had a mooring there because they, you're not supposed to drop anchors Anchor, into, yeah. in the coral. Oh, right. And they turn on the lights and it's it's devastation. It's just everything broken and brown and nothing alive there. But there's all these fish running around, yellowtails, running around, running around. And, it was after, and, the, and the guide is pointing these things out like there's nothing wrong. You see those... Uh, ones that have the broad paddles on them, those are called elkhorn cat. Yeah, but those are dead ones. It's, it was it was a horrible sight to look at. But Disturbing. anyway, that was that was a glass bottom boat thing. Yeah, I've, I've been on one of those too, and that that wouldn't be very fun to see dead things. No, you know, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. And I just saw an article in the in 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 the news uh, a couple of days ago that someplace in Florida. There is a whole field, uh, I guess you don't call it a field underwater, of elk horn that are, are being killed or dying and that are falling down. Uh, elk horn uh, coral is uh, named that because pretty much looks like elk horns sticking mm -hmm. way up. In a, and it turns out that the, the loss there wasn't only to the habitat as it was, but these elk horn uh, Coral help to mitigate the tides coming in and out, and the waves and everything. And it, so, is this is they're not sure what's going to happen there. They're going to filter the ocean for us, basically. Yeah, like you know, and we're just destroying it, crazy with pollution and garbage. And well, and yes, and let's hope that the 
World Heritage Sites and UNESCO, and it can help bring some education to people. Education and maybe help. Let's try to not destroy these. That would be nice. So, and on a happier note, hello <laughs> for, for coral reefs. Now, Ray, and I, I did take up scuba diving when I was in the Air Force briefly, but and the reason I did was stationed on uh, Kadena Air Force Base on the island of Okinawa. And one of my boy uh, buddies I hadn't been there, but a couple of weeks ago, goes, we'll go out on this little observation thing. You walked out to the ocean a little ways, and you went down uh, underwater, basically, with the right. windows. And the, I've never seen that much life color. I mean, you know, it's like watching it almost like a Disney movie. I thought, man, this is fantastic. They must be chumming the waters. Oh, no. He says he was a scuba diver. He says anywhere around this island is pretty much like that. So I uh, ended up snorkeling and taking a scuba diving class and it was fantastic i mean the beauty the wildlife now that was 1971 so i hope it's still there uh, mm -hmm. most of it but you know it's that kind of a thing that inspires people and i think these heritage sites are inspirations i agree people, with you right yeah. to protect and to save all to of see what you need beautiful. to protect but you enjoyed that yeah oh my gosh yes uh, I've, it was well, I've, it was a, like a life I, Almost a life-changing experience. I have praise for you because I can't. My husband loves the scuba dive. We've been several times throughout the world, and I, I can't. I get right around the boat, and as soon as I, my feet cannot touch anything, I, I go into a panic attack, and I have to get well, back into the boat immediately. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah be, that's... He's like, we're not going to spend any more money on you to go scuba diving if you can't do it. You know, no, he, But he loves it. He's true, great. Not it. everybody. And I did have a little trouble right away. Our first in the little pool exercises in a pool, yeah. just getting used to try to breathing through that yeah. regulator. Right. I was like the last one. Oh, and I'd pop up and gasping for breath. Yeah, that... But I went through it, and I'm so glad I did because that life... Under well, the to see that, yeah, the coral reefs. I got to see it on TV. Crystal clear water, yeah, just that, beautiful. What yeah, water should look like? If yeah. you run a good coral reef that has a lot of interesting fish, it's like every direction you turn, it's a yeah. Ooh, ooh, <laughs> ooh, but ooh, you can do that now ooh, on look, TV. Look you know, at that! What? Yeah, for, <laughs> versus going in. I I was uh, diving in the Keys one time, and I I, uh, I have no sense of direction, so. Um, they pair you up with somebody on the boat if you don't have a buddy with you. And so this woman I was paired up with, that's the first thing I said to you, said, can you navigate? Can you find the boat again? Because frequently I'd be, the dive would be over and I'd be 100 yards away from the boat, which they don't like. They don't like you to stay with your guide. <laughs> yeah, so uh, she kind of indicated to me in, in, in sign language to scuba dive that she was going to go up top and find the boat so <laughs> and, and I could wait down there. So I, I just kind of kneeled on the bottom waiting for her, and while, while I was kneeling there, a um, a moray eel came out and swam right by me in front of me. There was a, a shark came by, I don't remember. Oh, it was a, a nurse shark, which are not dangerous, and a turtle. They looked dangerous, though. Yeah. Did you have and, some rum, rum punch? Usually on those, ex, you know, those ex excursions, they always have rum punch for some reason. Oh, no. Uh no, the regular dive boats don't have anything. Oh, like that. okay. No. Maybe just the tourists. But anyway, it was just the most amazing thing, just crazy. And I, I would, yeah, I'd, I'd wanted to uh, scuba dive since I was a kid and read the Silent World, Jacques Cousteau's book. Oh. Then when and I you, became a scuba diver, I found out that uh, he, uh, he was uh, shocking as far as the, the 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 things he did while scuba diving. He, they made a movie called The Silent World too, and I think anybody who's uh, a scuba diver or into any kind of um, preservation of the ocean it would it would be shocked at the boat, at the, at the at the uh, the movie. I I don't remember the order this happened, but while they're cruising along, they ran into a baby whale. That I don't know what they did. I don't know if it died uh -huh. or what. Somehow or other, they wound up with a. Uh, I think it was a walrus, but I don't know what a walrus would have been doing where they were, <laughs> and then they're down diving and i guess they didn't have very good lights at that time and they're they're using these underwater torches and they're swimming along and and as the torches burn out they just throw them down and then they go on <laughs> so it was not quite yeah. into into the movement yet well i i i, 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 I <laughs> that part i didn't know i always figured jacques cousteau and his son as environmentalists but you know mm -hmm. i 
you know, by it giving just, them a little it, break, they may be different time. Yeah, they want not look environmentalists that they hadn't come to yet. You know, like yeah, this. yeah, right. Right. Oh, so what? It's here. It's out in the ocean. Nobody's ever going to see it. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and then right back to the the places place that we live in here with the uh, redwood. Now, I guess they they divided them up into various. Like I know Jedediah Smith Trail mm-hmm. is is one of them. Is it really? Yes, yes. And uh, I think this this whole general area, and it's just how wonderful it is to be living right in a World Heritage Site and appreciating what we see and, um, you know, not or trying to keep the people from destroying it. As you, beauty, yeah. Not too far from here in Humboldt is the tallest tree in the world, which is a United um, UNESCO site tree. Oh, I didn't even know 300 that. Yeah, any of the giants? 78, oh. 300, I think it's 378 feet. Uh, wow. Something like that. Yeah. They, they, that's where... they, they once had the toilet tallest tree in the world in Australia, and they knew how tall it was because they could measure it when they cut it down. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's see how many rings are. I don't yeah. <laughs> uh, another interest as far as trees, and I'm not... Have you been to the Avenue of the Giants? Yes. What, yes. Did, did, yeah. Did, Pretty did, amazing. It, yeah, mind-blowing. Yeah. 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 Um, there's, I don't know if this is a site or not. I should have checked this out. The Joshua, uh, wait a minute, not Joshua. The bristle cone pine the that oldest, e- on the eastern Sierra. There's, oldest I don't tree even in know. The world. Yeah, oldest tree in the world. Uh, I don't know if it's it's one or not, but I think they try to keep mo- keep that pretty secret as far as the site because we don't want people to, you know, go and just do their, yeah. Go, go back to the bar and say, hey, guess what I just did. Well, have you been to the Titans, right? The Titans? No. What? Where, no. I oh my! The, the Titans are right here. Okay. I mean, it's they're yeah. immensely tall, and they're yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, you go up to you know when you're leaving Crescent City, and it's the last turn. That I know it's, it's not a good name, but they call it Becker's Knob. Do you, oh, do, do you okay. Know, no, have you heard, heard of it? That. Well, yeah. you go to the very top, and you park, and then you you actually walk. To the Titans, and they used to be all shush, hush hush about it because people would go and bring their trash and not be respectful. But now they've actually opened it up and have a trail. You should Google it. I will, and, and the, it, you and it, will. It will blow your mind that it's okay. right here, it, right outside of Crescent City. It, that it's beautiful. You don't have to go to the Avenue of the Giants, right? You know, which is right. three hours away, yeah, from us, yeah. Um, to see something like that. And mm-hmm. I, I can't believe how many people have not seen the Titans. No, I haven't. Didn't even know they were there. And uh, you're, you're going to be, Smith River. yeah. <laughs> Hello. So. Yeah, you should definitely go. Okay. What, would I, what, would, what, what, what would I Google to find the, that? The Titans. Oh, okay. Yeah, right in Crescent City. Yeah. So they're, if, they're amazing. And uh, you, for you all listening, remember you can text in. Give us your opinion, yeah. See what your, you, uh, let us know something. Questions, comments, the text number here is... Five four one six six one four zero nine eight. Yeah, and we're here at KCIW one hundred point seven FM, yeah, we local operators. volunteer community radio station. Operators are standing by. Yes, to they are. And yeah. your text. <laughs> Ton of them. Yes. So okay. Well, the other ones I've been to, and I haven't been to many. Uh, of course, there's a lot of them I haven't. Uh, I might have been to and haven't. Uh, didn't the know site. Didn't, the didn't come up there. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Grand Canyon, of course. Now, I will say this. Uh, when when my wife and I pulled up to the, well, the hotel where we stayed and we went out for our first walk, when I saw that Grand Canyon, I mean, it teared me up. It's mind-blowing. It teared me. I, you know, of course, we all see hundreds of pictures. and But being there and blah, experiencing I, it. I, it was, I get chills right now thinking about it, you know. And so, and how many people each year die from taking selfies three to four, from leaning I, over? I, I, it blows my mind every time. I just like, well, yeah, there used to be a comedian that did a bit uh, about thinning the herd, <laughs> and and his and okay. his it, the, the bit was, you know, uh, if there's a herd of caribou, and one of the caribou are born and it's not too bright or has something wrong with it, it eventually gets. Or quickly gets eaten by predators because that's the way the world goes. 
and the and the herd says, well, okay, you know, that's that. But we do just the opposite of we have people that are born with mental defects and all that type of thing. It's we work like hell to keep them going. They're just trying and, to take pictures. And it's like this. Yeah, and some, sometimes you don't qualify to be in a program. You just, you know, you're kind of borderline there. So, but that's well, that. That was definitely thinning the herd. Hello. Well, it, it, and when my wife and I were, that was bef- long before selfies and that. What you and all that, yeah. But but I was amazed as we walked out there. There's nothing really to stop you from. There was not really much of a barrier. Mm-hmm. I was glad because who wants a big chain link fence with signs? Well, true. Blah blah blah. I, and I, but I thought, wow, it's not too hard to just step over this barrier. <laughs> right. And there's not signs saying, like, "Please do not." But do again, that. I, I like that. What I don't like, what they've done, uh, I haven't been there since. Or when this happened, they've now put some kind of a, an observatory up a there. Skywalk. Yeah, I've been yeah, there. not a fa- that, to me. That's like putting a roller coaster up on something. Is that uh, actually I, in the park? Yes. Oh, yeah. Where you I you guess, walk up on it and see yeah, through. I, I know what you're talking about. It, yeah. As a, I mean, because it's private my land. Personal around opinion. There. I just thought it was tacky. Yes. Yeah, well, they're right. just trying to this money. Yeah. Talk about money. Did you take one of the uh, donkeys down? Oh gosh, no. <laughs> oh, that was. Oh, that. I walked. I took Did the donkeys you? down. I it was did. totally my, fine. My. 1968 it was eight miles down, and I took the Bright Angel wow. Trail up. Yeah, it was okay. Wow. 12 I, miles, and it felt like 112 I miles. Saw, I, I saw people do it. Yeah. I didn't do it myself. No, yeah, that's pretty amazing. I, yeah. It was unfortunately my first backpacking trip, and had I known... Oh, you what not to carry? You would have backpacked. You went to the, I would have uh, packed hot, a lot. What they call it? Oh, you walked down and up. I backpacked down. Oh, okay. You, I, was, uh, you would have backed an extra pair of feet. <laughs> I needed something. If you got down there and, and there was a, a helicopter waiting for you, that would have been a, a thing. I would've... That would have been sweet because it yeah. was a long walk. Back oh, I can imagine yeah. coming back. It's uh, the backup that's the problem. Yeah. yeah. Do you do that in a day, or you go down and stay overnight? I guess uh, we we walked down, stayed overnight. We stayed three days. Um, uh, it was a four hour trip down and up, a little over eight and a half up. Uh, what time of year was this? Not summer, I assume. No, because but it, it was hot. Pretty... I do remember oh, that. Okay, but They've this was way back. People it's there. a dry heat. That was just... it's a dry heat. Oh, it's dry it heat. So it's much different. So Still crazy. Hot. <laughs> Your sweat doesn't even have time to drip. It just drives right out. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's quite the adventure, though, Robin. It is. Wow. Yeah. Another neat thing to do there is to uh, take one of the raft trips, but that takes uh, years to, to to get the reservations to hold. Yeah. Rafting is fun. And in, uh, on that, too, I did read a book. Many, uh, a friend of mine gave it to me. Now I'll never think of the title. It was about the first, well, let me say the first white man to go down the Colorado River. And uh, Was he in a barrel? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. But after that, he went to Niagara Falls and tried that. There you go. With the barrel. But, which is yeah. another amazing feat. Called... John Wesley Harding, I think, might yeah. be the name. Anyway, one-armed guy, him and I think four or six other men, down the the Colorado, um, of course, before the dams and everything. But talk about courage, because it was like uh, rounding. You you might round a bend in some rapids and then not know if you're going to have a waterfall yeah, or not. They, uh, I think they made it uh, well past where the past the Grand Canyon, and then I can't remember exactly where they came out. But anyway, I just thought that was uh, quite a trip that I wouldn't. Yeah, in those days, you couldn't get the guidebook out uh, uh, as no. you're coming up or, your, uh, yeah, yeah, or no. check YouTube to see what's <laughs> ahead. Yeah. Right. Have, have you been to Niagara? Niagara no, Falls? I have not. That's another one you just have to experience. I, I, have, I would imagine. I went there on my honeymoon. So it's, it's magical. Like, it really it's the East Coast. No, I just, it was magical. Yeah. I bet. I bet. I don't even know if that's a site. Might be. Might not. Uh-oh. The know. operators are going to uh, check their <laughs> There we go. She's yeah. on it. Well, you know, I, I got to look because well, I love to. Google. Well, no. Who doesn't? If you're one of those people who know whether or not that's a site, you can race or Robin to the site. to Google and yeah. send us a text. A text. There are a lot yeah. of sites, though, around the Grand Canyon that are UNESCO sites. There's the Anastasi, oh, the, the plateaus, um, yeah. the pueblos that yeah. are there, and all of the cliff dwellings that are I've been thousands to, of years old. Those are UNESCO sites as well. I've been to some of those. That's incredible. I wonder, I wonder how many correlate with the vortexes. Remember you were talking about vortexes before? I, some of the, yes, how right. many were can connect right. the two, you know? I 
Because th th that was fascinating to learn. Niagara is not a UNESCO site. It does well. not meet the criteria. Well, really? Kind of surprising. It is. Very. Got to have certain rules, I guess. I guess. You've got to have rules. So if you want to make a comment about that not meeting the criteria, uh, <laughs> you can. <laughs> Make you could send us a text uh, to our operator who is standing by twiddling her fingers. What? 541-661-4098. And on, the, on an Olympic flavor here, what I did discover, uh, the banks of the Sen, is it Sen or Sane? I say Sane. Well, you, you know, I, uh, everybody always said Sane, but, but I noticed that the Olympics this year, all of the... Commentators are saying sin. Okay. So have we been saying it wrong all along? Or I called it the same it when I was there. Yeah. Okay. Well, either sane or sin, uh, the para, the banks of the sin uh, are or are is or site. are UNESCO sites. Yes. Are. Just don't and go in the water. I was going to say how funny that now it's see that you have to uh, figure in this horrible pollution, I guess, that's that's there. So by banks, do you mean like the the, the, the river, whale? basically, yeah, through okay, Paris? Yeah. Right. Well, it's because when it was built, you know, when that the city was built, and that's it's ancient times. Yeah. And the water that when it rains and goes through th that kind of stuff, that's where it gets to be toxic. You can't change it because mm. they didn't have a sewer system like Italy does doesn't either. Yeah, it's yeah. But speaking of Italy, there's more UNESCO heritage sites in Italy than anywhere else in the world. How Why do you think most? that is? They have all of their um, monasteries and their. Monkeraries. I don't know. Monkeraries. <laughs> I like that term. But there you go. Yeah, well, um, they have the cathedrals and yeah. every, but there are more yeah, sites in Italy than anywhere else in the yeah. world. They, they do have some interesting places. Mm -hmm. Definitely. It is a fun, beautiful place. Yeah. And you've been there too? Mm -hmm. You know, year, years ago, I, I did a, a, a mini grand tour kind of, and we were was with my then wife, and we visited her relatives in uh, Hungary. And you would go through the cities and stuff, and the buildings would look kind of disheveled, and they were kind of not in the best shape by any means. I can remember seeing a hospital that looked like the windows were falling out, and the, I mean, I would, we thought, well, this is awful. So when we left Budapest, we went to uh, uh, Venice. And if you go to Venice, all the buildings, the mortar is falling off in places, and it's, and there it was, it was lovely. It was, um, we call, not atmosphere, but it, 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 it worked for these old buildings to look like that. Oh, okay, yeah, but, yeah. No, but you don't, you didn't, don't do the, did you do the gondolas? Because that's where, that yeah, that's there. It's it's dirty. It's polluted. I was traveling on a Rick Steve. Guidebook who recommended Tonko on the gondola. This is, That's this right. Is so we listened, totally. listened to what he said. It is they, beautiful, but they, it's ancient times. Yeah. They have yeah. water taxis that you can take that are less money. Hello. Oh. I see you. Have, what else do you have to say? I, I can see uh, it in your well, eyes. You see my, my face clicking. No, I, uh, the good things again that uh, uh, UNESCO has provided in the past, they've been uh, try. When the AIDS crisis was going on, they were trying to, you know, assist in different ways medically to, to take care of that. Uh, they they worry about were they part of the conspiracies to get us to wear masks so we can get sicker? I don't know if they've been into that that one or not okay. or not yet. But I just want to know whether we should pay any attention to these people or not because if they, oh, if, they if they were into that conspiracy, then well, I tell you, for what I've been reading, I certainly would pay attention to uh, okay. them because. They they just you know I think they have the the right ideas, but they had helped on that uh, water. They they try to help out with water resources, especially for people that are in you know poorer countries, polluted water. Um, they back the, the wind power, the solar power, base. And, oh, disaster preparedness. They're right. into that, and they not only back to the water. They not only train them. Uh, you know, give them a water pump or whatever. They train them how it works and let it break down and let them fix it. Yeah. Because if you give something some someone like that mm -hmm. and then you leave it, and then it breaks, they don't know what to do with some of these countries. And some of these devices are just remarkably simple and they save tons of tons of lives. 
Yeah, definitely. Because then they can feed their live herd and or their animals, and it's just a whole community over just some water. Speaking of communities and water, I've been working on my my cistern this week. It kind of screwed up on me. And a uh, cistern is just a big barrel that, that you um, have a spring that runs into. And in times I've had to drain it and then refill it and this and that. And I'm looking closely at the water turn this time. And it's full of these little things. I don't know what they are. They look like little crustaceans, little tiny shrimp or something. And, and uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I do run it through filters and a UV light and all kind of stuff. And I haven't died carbonates. yet, but uh, maybe I should see UNESCO about getting one of those things. Or you discovered a brand new health magical thing that it could be it, gonna... i should try to catch one in a jar and get a better look at it than just this little thing squiggling around <laughs> that sounds interesting yeah <laughs> again maybe your sister will you have to submit that for an, yet yeah, another don't drink that. heritage site you've got all these possible heritage sites yes. in the house there it He's a heritage automobile site. yourself <laughs> i've been working on it for two weeks and it has not felt like a heritage site but it was a hell of a site but anyway i think i have it fixed now well you know everybody want to know what 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 are you doing what are you redoing the car in the garage what is it oh a model t model t yeah. 1926 it's, yeah model t pickup do you plan on showing it in shows or something no or, no i have no idea what i'm going to do with it <laughs> yeah because we're building that's kind of I, I like to do that also to work on uh, hers. Yeah. My first one was a 69 bug. I'm into bugs. Uh -huh. And I have a 73 Super Beetle right now that I'm restoring. Yeah. I lose interest in the early 60s. It's got to be like way old. Probably, probably late 50s into some of the early 60 cars, but to me, they're just ordinary. You could go to the dealership when I was a kid and buy one. I like the, the older historical ones. Well, 50s, I. I yeah. uh, but just to prove that you can, a bug, and that's why I like it, it's proof that you can build a car that will last. Yes. Because it was built for the war, four bolts, boom. You know, you don't need to buy a new car every, like they train us to think. Yeah. Every two years, you know, it hits certain million miles and you need to get a new one. No. They should have built cars that you should have for 300,000 miles, right? This car is 96 years old and remarkably simple. I mean, it's very little, it's not much more than a horse and buggy except that right. it's a, but it's built strong. That's what I used to do. That thing's in breaking in it. Or, yes, yeah, it was very well Pride made. Right in their work, yeah. Now, before we get too far into the brand uh -oh. new show about automobiles at <laughs> Troy and, oh, and then right. No, no, no. I down to you. Do you have a, <laughs> we do have a text. Um, just came in. Another beautiful heritage site on the West Coast is the Olympic National Forest in Washington. Well, yeah, absolutely. Now, I, and I have not been there either. But uh, and that's not very far. No, it's not. You know, it, some of the backlash that I was reading about too, and uh, about people that don't think that the heritage sites are that important. Oh well, we're not going to visit them. Uh, I won't ever see it. I happen to be the type of person that I know something might I'll probably never see or go to, but I'm just glad it's there and I mm -hmm. want it there and I want it preserved. I just think. You know, uh, it's kind of a selfish thought to think, well, just because we're not going to be there, we're, those sites shouldn't be that important. But I think they are. They all are important. Yeah, they're national wonders, yeah. Well, there's a, that, that mentality of just tearing down the old for the new is just insane to me. Yeah, and in, in Europe, they have buildings that are older than our country. Well, yeah. A, a lot of them. People are living in them, apartments. and yeah. And they they don't complain about them. No. What's weird about it, especially in Europe, everything is a lot smaller, as far, smaller as far as height wise. When I when I go through because I'm I'm six six one and a half whatever, um, people were smaller. Yeah. Back in the turn of the century or whenever, and then we started getting with other countries and other cultures and having more babies and people. <laughs> Change their shapes. Now we have to have doorways that are seven feet tall, like the rest of the world. Yeah. Practically, yeah. yeah, a little wider at times. Yeah, that yeah. <laughs> was always fascinating. Yeah, when I was stationed in Okinawa, um, the we went downtown, had some friends live off base in apartments, and they were, <laughs> yeah, pretty to uh, totally different than what I was used to back in the states. 
Yeah. That's part of the joys of traveling. No, it is, though. Yes. I agree. It is. You've got to be open for stuff like that. Right. Yeah. But know where, know, know where you're going. Know your money. When I've traveled, it, it, it's fascinating that people will go to countries and they don't know the money. You know, like pounds and pence and, and uh, London or whatever, or the euro. They didn't know the conversion. It's like, what are you doing? Why would you do that and not know your paper? Well, it's, I, I, I have to think. Oh, oh I'm I have, sorry. I have to think sorry. back. Um, the one I do remember is in Thailand was converting it to bot. Uh, right. I think it's still bot. Yeah, and that one was pretty simple. Now, in Okinawa, I believe everything was just before the Japanese took over. Uh, they did that halfway when I was there. It was uh, just American money. Did you get regular currency? Did you get paid in script? Military? No. No. Okay. no. In Vietnam, we got paid in script, which was like monopoly money. You didn't, you didn't get greenbacks. You got the, the I forget what uh, what it was the official name of it, but it was a, it was money that you could spend on base. Oh, the same money it wasn't. It was real money, real worth. But a lot of people took it down, down downtown, and the Vietnamese would accept it as uh, as, as regular money that they didn't care. But but the interesting thing was. There was 120 piastres to a dollar, and they took the script, the hundred, as 120 piastres. So you, I try to tell these guys, you lose 20% every time you go downtown. And, and spend the script. Yeah, and then and it took two minutes to go to the yeah. place and get, get new money. And then every now and then, the military would decide that there's way too much American money floating around these these little towns, and in the middle of the night, they would cancel that script. That script was no good anymore. So all these bar owners and everything that had I don't know how much money it was gone. It wasn't worth wow, anything at all anymore. Another piece of the puzzle, yeah, from you. Well, <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, and I know in in Thailand they just uh, they loved the. Love us to spend the American dollars rather than the bot. Yeah, the bot's yeah. gold, isn't it? No, they were there was like paper bot. I can't remember what the exchange was at the time. Uh, I want to say, uh, you know, I just don't remember. I just know that the American money mm -hmm. that was sort of the equivalent was worth a little more than the bot, from my recollection. Right, that many years ago. But now, now that's a year. When I was in London. <laughs> I th the joke was they didn't want to convert into the euro because it didn't have the queen's picture on it, the money. <laughs> that's what I was told. And I was like, that's an interesting thought. Uh, uh, I think they'd probably think a little deeper than that. I would hope Just, so. You know, but you see people so yeah, the English the have been around a while. open up their wallet and go, oh, okay, how much is it? And they just go like this and yes. have somebody pick it out. It's like, yeah. what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, uh, yeah. Interesting. Another fun thing about traveling. For sure. Well, yeah, I don't even know what's the deal in England now. The euro, they don't use the euro, do they? Aren't they the ones that didn't want to? Right, the English didn't didn't buy into it. They're, they're still with pounds, pounds and pence. And, oh, yeah. okay, okay. It's not too, it's not too difficult to learn. It just, yeah, would be for me, I think. But uh, okay, but the euro, pretty much everywhere, everywhere else in Europe has got the euro. And the euro is about the same as the dollar, right? Yeah, pretty pretty close. Pretty close. Just depending on what, what type of year you're going and stuff. Yeah. Yas. Amazing. Oh, boy. Let's see. Back to the other. He's got a list. Herod well, yeah. List I didn't get it all, but I've already said the American Heritage Sites. And, Robin, you probably know more. The but, National oh, um, Yellowstone. The National Parks. Yellowstone, of course. Which is amazing. Um, Hawaii. Uh, has uh, one of the volcanoes or a volcano volcanic park, and we said the Grand Canyon. Uh, bu, bu, bu. Do you really need a protective oh. vo volcano? Do what now? If the, if part of the reason for these things is so they're protected. Do you, do you really need to protect a volcano? Well, how about the? I would say so. The land around it. Okay. I mean, you know, we're we're at the mercy of the when the volcano wants to okay, just, blow up. Just, they want to see money spent things. protecting something that doesn't need protection. Well, and then uh, little old might, you don't know. San Antonio, Texas. I was there. The missions. The, the missions in San Antonio. San Antonio. Those are yeah, stationed uh, UNESCO there at sites. Lackland. Yeah, yeah. I was I was there as well. The big in San Antonio. The, the big disappointment at the Alamo 
You know, you see all the postcards yeah, that look as <laughs> I mean, Alamo is out in the desert someplace. Right, you know? right. And, and you go downtown San Antonio, the Alam, the backdrop to the Alamo is a hotel. It's hello uh, and but tiny. Th- there, there is a, uh, uh, a a movie site, the Alamo, uh, that uh, was made for the movie. Oh. and afterward they were going to destroy it. And supposedly, John Wayne did not want it destroyed, so it's still there now. Good. And the that might have been what the postcards were done. Okay. And that's also a big tourist attraction. The Everglades oh, is a UNESCO my, site. Yeah. Um, my favorite place in the whole world. Really? Yes. I've never been there, but I, I, I just see it. Not the whole world, but the, this country, let's okay. say. Yeah. Okay. Mammoth Cave National Park. Oh, how about Carlsbad? Carlsbad Caverns think, is yeah. a site, yes. I'm not into caverns. The Smoky Mountains. I, f- I finally got to Carlsbad, and I, he, I, f- I felt... I, I don't know how to describe it. Um, when I was a kid, all the my friends used to go to Carlsbad and uh, other, and and driving around. Do you remember how they used to, they used to put bumper stickers on your car where they would wind them up when you visited a place? Oh. And then we see all these Carlsbad. So when I finally got to go there, not all that long ago actually, I, I just felt like it was cliche to be to be there. And I and I want you to walk around one hole in the ground with a bunch of rocks i think i think they were kind of all the same so me, well, you're not a big spelunker not, fan man. no i'm not okay. no and i'm not i mean i couldn't do it to, and i mean if there'd been some wildlife open. in there other than crickets or something i would have thought it was okay but, well you want to see those uh, st- stalactites and stalagmites is, is that what you're talking about yeah you know yeah, yeah. after you've seen yeah yeah how about I, well then, i don't know you've seen them it's kind of like a fireworks display okay boom <laughs> Without the noise, of course. People yeah. love it. Yeah. And then aren't there some, uh, I thought there was some uh, bat, a huge bat cave. Maybe that's Mexico with, uh, that they're, that's one of the sites. I, or I know that they are, they're trying to protect because the bats are very necessary. Right. To, I, I think that the is environment. in Mexico. Yeah. yeah. I think that is in Mexico, okay. al- along with the crystal caves that are also. Oh. Did in Mexico? Yeah, and there's also crystal caves in I think it's Costa Rica. Maybe not. Well, I spoke out of turn. That's I have okay. to go look that oh, up. Oh dear, no, we, we'll have no more of that, please. No okay. more, please. <laughs> right? No, I'm just kidding. We have to speak in turn. Yeah. Well, if any of y'all out there have your favorite heritage site, we're yeah. still we're running out yeah. of opportunity. We only have about seven minutes left, so yeah. Five eight six one four zero nine eight is the number to, to contact. That's us. right. That's right. It'll be good. Uh, so, what else is on the horizon? I don't know. Oh, we got a little dead air. Well, yeah. Maybe talk some yeah. other. What other sites are there? Besides all the archaeological sites, there's um, all of the sites in Malaysia, the temples that I, I'm sorry, I don't even remember the names of them. They're so tall, and they're the biggest temple complexes in the world. Those are UNESCO sites. How they built them, I don't know. They cover like a square mile or miles. That, that is a fascinating subject is how some of these things got built before. Well, and right back Before to the Stonehenge was, that we were talking about. Yeah. That's the, the new one, the new discovery. How they, I think could, they had more mental capability yeah, as I far know. as they didn't have tools, but they had more mo- movement within their mind. Yeah. If you believe in any of that. If I needed to do I something do. now, I just go down to the hardware store and buy the latest Milwaukee <laughs> tool, plug in the battery, and off we go. <laughs> what fascinates me is the knowledge that these ancients had just of the stars and the heavens. Oh, yeah. I mean, because they were more in tune with it. They had to be, but, but they, there they were didn't so have many... television or YouTube or no, books or anything. So, how right. did they learn all this? Well, I don't know. You stare up there know. long enough and you're going to figure something out, right? Right. That's how they learned time. And, but they, they, my thing is, they were more, a lot more respectful to the earth, it, especially the, the Indian nations and yes. stuff like that. Yes. They they were just in tune with the the planet, right? Which I think we've lost a lot of that. Well, well, you, you see where your corn comes from and your your vegetables and the animals are. Now a lot of kids and uh, 
don't even realize that that uh, what it takes lettuce that. and things actually grow in the dirt. You know, they think they right. they grow in little cellophane packages. <laughs> yeah, or they've never even been on a farm. Yeah, which is kind of crazy. And the other so a couple of the other the man-made um, heritage sites: Taj Mahal, India. Yes. Great Wall of China, of course. Of course. Um, oh, Machu. Machu, Machu Picchu. Picchu. Yeah. That was also one of the sites that we had on the vortex yes. in the. What is this that vortex was... you're talking about? Oh, you didn't. Oh, you don't. You oh, want us to go uh, back? To, you don't remember that? You didn't do your homework. The, no, oh, the, the vortex those was... are amazing. No, uh, uh, I forget it, these it, shows. It's the an intersection of energy. Oh, okay. Will, the, 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 the sun parades towards us. Yeah. And there's negative and positive. Now, now you want I, the Now positive. I know why I didn't bother to remember it. Yeah. You want the positive <laughs> vortex? Is that those are been known to give you spiritual enlightenment yeah. and peace and all this really wonderful inner, uh, wonderful thing. Yes. And then there's the know. negatives that do just the opposite. Okay. But the, yeah, the, the, like I said, Machu Picchu was one. We talked yeah. about Mount Shasta being one, Sedona, Arizona. Sedona, yeah. yeah. And boy, Sedona, well, I've been to Sedona too. It's not a site, but I think it could be. It's pretty fantastic place to me. Well, and uh, yeah, it's Rain amazing. Yeah. There. Great for photography. Okay. So well, yeah, yeah. there you go. Multitudes All right, we're well, winding down here yeah. to the end of the show. So yeah. it's a shame you missed that vortex part. That was really good. Oh, he was I, I didn't. Oh, I, you didn't miss it. Uh, which you reminded me. I, I yeah, you know. that was fascinating to learn about. Yeah, it was. Oh. So a lot of I'm just again I'm just glad I, I'm a United Nations fan, a UNESCO yeah. fan now that I know more about it, and uh, I just think it's it's an it's an important thing to have in the world especially where some of the world is going yeah isn't that the truth i think especially this year with the lowering of the ocean level and the discovery of so many underwater things yeah. i think that we'll have some more unesco sites in the future oh, I... together with those twenty thousand buildings that were just discovered with lidar in the amazon forest Oh, gosh. You know, the just recently in the last couple right. of months. And the Amazon forest is a site. Yes. And the destruction there that is is a little scary. Uh, right. I'm glad Bolsonaro is out. Um, he was just uh, into the burning of the forest, just indiscriminate destruction. Uh, and it's already in trouble. Yes. But, you know, but the Amazon rainforest is a site, and I think it's, it's like, a, important for the whole world. Yeah. You know. It's our oxygen. Trees are our oxygen. Right, yeah. right. We have to breathe in, on the planet, and if we don't have that, uh -huh. then we don't. We can't breathe. Yeah, yeah. If you if you're a guy in Brooklyn, though, that doesn't. What do you talk about trees? You know. Well, again, we just, got we got trees. Well, yeah. yeah. That's right. <laughs> but again, those sites, those things are. Uh, I I know they're there. Whether it's the the polar bear or you know some little crustacean up two thousand feet, I'm just I, I'm. I'm glad to know that they're there and that they are going to be protected. When be when uh, I was in Alaska, and I, I, don't, I don't know what the status is, is now. There's the, what they call the North Slope, which was oh. the developmental people were trying to, to get for oil uh, development, and uh, the people who cared about the environment were very much against it. And I went to a, a talk one time where they happened to come up to the, that happened to come up, and. Uh, this guy said, well, we have to, of course, uh, save that. That's a wonderful place. You know, we all go there every weekend. Just being sarcastic. It's just He's never going to go there. Nobody we know is ever going to go there. So why do we care about saving it? So, it was, are you talking about the pipeline? Yeah, well, yeah. Post-pipeline. Well, the there's, there's, there's land up there now that uh, they're trying to develop, and it goes back and forth depending on who the president is. And I think what, somebody told me recently what the status is. It's open f for bids, and nobody's bidding on it. I don't, I don't know if that's true or not, but yeah, it's a, the the pipeline was an absolute total environmental disaster for Alaska. It completely Older destroyed life. the entire thing. Uh, not so much the pipeline itself, but what it it more than doubled the population, and oh, doubled the population. Oh, we're, getting, we're, we're fighting out here, everybody. To be Thank continued. You. Tune in. Tune in next week, and you'll find out what the pipeline did to Alaska. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks all. Okay. Adios. <laughs> <laughs>